At least once a year, I am faced with a challenge. It's a challenge you might be familiar with. The challenge of how much love can you express with a piece of chicken? You see, when I sit down to cook something on Valentine's Day, like I, I always, it always feels just somewhat insufficient to the task. Like I'm trying to express love and thankfulness and gratitude and, and everything you're trying to express on, on Valentine's Day and what I have in front of me is a piece of chicken. And it just, just doesn't quite seem to cut it. And this feeling of insufficiency, that, that what I'm doing doesn't quite seem up to snuff. It, it, it's something I experience when it's the somewhat amusing moment of trying to express love with, with chicken to the other more serious moments in life. Uh, whenever I'm sitting at my desk, when I sit down to start writing a funeral, I'm always impressed by like, trying to wrap up an entire life of relationships, of thankfulness, uh, and, and the complexity of it, because you can't just gloss over and make it sound like everything was perfect, because there's always, there's always more going on. And, and, and I'm, to try to do that in about 25 minutes, because that's about how long grief, I mean, funerals, 25 and out seems about right. And, and I always feel insufficient to that task as well. It's that, it's... Um, Raising children, which seems to be designed to make you feel like you're not quite sure what you're up to. Can I get an amen? <laughs> I have a sneaking suspicion that I'm not the only person who struggles with feelings of insufficiency at times. The feeling that what I'm doing is not going to make a difference, may not be significant, or I'm just kind of floundering. And as I read the parable today, this parable of the mustard seed, it strikes me that this is what Jesus, what might be Jesus' response to the disciples who are also grappling with a feeling of insufficiency. Let us remember that the disciples, they didn't know the end of the story. Like, we look back, and to us, it's history. To them, it was what they were doing. Right? And so let us just take a minute to appreciate that there were 12 disciples and they were gathered around Jesus and they were saying something. They were saying Jesus is Lord. And at the same time he is, that they're saying Jesus is Lord, the most common thing that is said about Lord is that Caesar is Lord. Right? That was the thing everyone else was saying. There's the 12 people saying Jesus is Lord and then everyone else is saying Caesar is Lord. And Caesar has 28 legions at five and a half thousand soldiers per legion. That's 154,000 soldiers. Like just that aspect of it. Like there, there's 12 of them saying Jesus is Lord and then the entire Roman legionary force that says you're wrong, right? You have to appreciate that when they're up there saying Jesus is Lord, you think they might have grappled with some feelings of inadequacy? Like is this really matter? Is this, is this doing something? Is this significant? And so Jesus, in the middle of the parables, he, he tells this one parable to his 12 disciples. He says that the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone has taken and sown in a field. It is the smallest of seeds. But when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs, such that it becomes a tree. Like the thing, you ever had a shrub get so big on you that it is basically a tree? Like that's what it, so that the birds of the air come and make nests and its branches. Think about that mustard seed, right? If, if you were talking to a mustard seed, and assuming a mustard seed could, could hear, and you said to that mustard seed, you are going to grow to be so big that you are going to provide shelter from birds from all around. What do you think that mustard seed would say back to you, assuming a mustard seed could talk? What do you think you'd say? I'm kind of itty bitty. The bird is so much bigger than me that the bird would step on me without noticing. Right? There, there's an, I'm not sure you got this right. You, you're talking to the wrong seed. Go talk to the avocado. That's a lot bigger. Right? Assuming the mustard seed had a sense of humor. But, but that's what happens. 
And, and that's what Jesus talks about. When the kingdom of God is like. Whenever Jesus is telling parables, he almost always starts them with, the kingdom of God is like. If you want to know what it's like when God's in charge, when God's will is done on earth as it is, it is in heaven, look at the parables. The kingdom of God is like this. Right? This is how Jesus starts his first sermon. The kingdom of God has come near. Uh, repent, for the kingdom of God has, has drawn near. And so, what Jesus is getting at here is that in the kingdom of God, small things, mustard seeds, can make a vast difference. Small things done in faith can make a vast difference. And if we look at other aspects of the Christian faith, I think we start to see this. Right? Jesus says one sentence on the cross, and the whole... It's the linchpin of all of Scripture. Here it is. All of Scripture, the good news, hangs on this one sentence. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. That's what Jesus says from the cross. Right? And if you hear that one sentence, and you respond and make one decision, yes, I accept that forgiveness. Right? That's one decision. How many decisions do you make a day? How many decisions do you make in a lifetime? In the midst of all of those decisions, this is just one single decision. And yet, it is our faith that that one single decision to accept when Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what to do, they do, to accept that we are forgiven is the seed, the mustard seed that grows to become eternal life. Right? This comes up in other places, right? When we talk about worship, and, and we want to have worship that's significant, worship that matters, worship that changes lives. And, and, and so we start thinking about big gatherings and technology and music and grandness. And then what does Jesus say about worship? Wherever two or three are gathered, I am there. Small gatherings change lives. Right? Talk about service. When Jesus is talking about service and how we will be evaluated on how, how the final test on how we have served. Like, I, I want to be able, I want to serve Shalbina and, and the nation. I want to serve the world and make it a better place and make a difference in people's lives. And, and how does Jesus approach this? Whenever you gave me a cup of water when I was thirsty or gave me food when I was hungry. And the people that were, who hear this say, when, when were you hungry and I fed you? When were you thirsty and I gave you something to drink? And Jesus says, as you have done to the least of these. Like Jesus is not saying, go out and try to organize huge things that will change the world. Give some people something to drink. Small things, right? A glass of water. Mustard seeds. Change the world. Our worship, our prayers, our service, our offerings, individually by themselves, might feel insufficient and inadequate. Yet they are offered and received by the one who tells us that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Small things. Big difference. Today, today we come together around the communion table, as people around the world do. This is World Communion Sunday. And we come to this, and um, is this the most significant meal you'll have today? Like, are you going to have something to eat that's going to be bigger than what you get here? I hope the answer is yes. If you are not sure if you're going to eat more today than what you get at this table, tell me you're coming over for lunch, right? This is... Well, you're coming over for lunch no matter what. Uh, so, it's a small thing, right? And yet, this small thing, we proclaim this to be a foretaste of the feast to come, when all the saints will be gathered together in, in the kingdom of God, and all will be made right. And so, yes, it is small, it is insignificant, I will have other meals that will feel far more satisfying, yet when we come to this table, this is the table that connects us to something eternal. This is what connects us what the kingdom, to the kingdom that is to come. This connects us to our salvation. This is my body is broken for you. I think having this understanding helps us in, in two ways. I think it helps us with both how we see ourselves and how we see others. Because it is my experience that most people tend to either be too hard on themselves or tend to be too hard on others. You don't have to raise your hand and self-identify on that, but that does tend to be how, how we lean. We tend to be really, either really hard on ourselves or we tend to be harder uh, on others. When it comes to being hard on ourselves, feeling of our own inadequacy and insufficiency, 
I have said, as I've said before, the, fast, the tasks that I face on a regular basis do, are challenging and do leave me feeling insufficient. To be a father, a husband, a pastor, to see that the mustard seed grows to be something far larger, that communion is a foretaste of something far greater, is to remind me, and I need it, that what I do will be enough. Not because I am great, what I do is mustard seeds, but because the one who makes the seeds to grow is, right? God is good and that, that's grace, right? It can be hard for some of us to see ourselves with grace, to trust that God will take what we do and that it will grow to become something greater, something that is part of the kingdom that is to come. And that, yeah, this is what Jesus tells his disciples, the 12 disciples, all 12 of them, who are facing all the world, Jesus is Lord, against an entire world that's saying Caesar is Lord. And they're saying, does this matter? And Jesus is saying, yes, it does. For in planting these seeds, you are growing something that is going to provide shelter for, for the birds, right? This is going to provide grace and good news for the whole world. And so if this rings true, if, if any of you struggle with feelings of insufficiency at times, let me remind you to look at this parable and to come, come to communion and remember that what we do in the name of Jesus out of love for him, no matter how small, are the seeds of the kingdom of God by the grace of God. So, to make sure we're tracking all on the same page, the, the logic of this has been that it, the small mustard seed grows into something vast by the grace of God, that communion, the small meal, is a foretaste of a vast meal to come, that, that I can view myself and see what I am doing, even though I struggle at times to see it as sufficient, to trust that what I'm doing offered to God is going to grow, will become part of uh, God's kingdom by the grace of God. That also shapes how we see our neighbors, right? Whether our neighbors be our neighbors in the pew, our neighbors down the street, or our neighbors in other churches. For if I know how much I need to hold on to this, that God takes what I offer and it becomes enough in the offering, it might be that there is a practice to cultivate in seeing our neighbors with that same grace. Jesus does have something to say about loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. What would it look like for us to trust that God can use what our neighbor does when our neighbor is planting seeds? To, to see what our neighbor does as planting seeds, even if the seeds might not be planted in the same way that I would do it. Because we all know that my way is the right way, right? Mm-hmm. Because if... You might not struggle with that. I like things done my way. And, and to allow other people to do things their way and to see what they are doing as mustard seeds, as grace, as something that God can take and, and use, even if it's not done the way I wanted it. Can, can I confess that that's not the easiest thing for Andy to do sometimes? Yeah? The book of Hebrews, as it wraps up, helps us understand the stance that this leads us to. The book of Hebrews talks in the, in the last uh, chapters about faith as being the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, that our, by faith our ancestors saw beyond the years. Like all, all the saints of the Old Testament died in faith without having received, receiving the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth for people who seek in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland, right? This view to see all the folks of the Old Testament as people who were planting the seeds but not seeing the trees. Like, they, they weren't there yet, but they believed and they trusted that the, those, those seeds would grow. They lived without having received the promises just as we do. What we do as we worship and pray and serve and offer, are we are planting seeds that by the grace of God will grow into something far greater than we could ever do ourselves. Or as Hebrews puts it, we are taking steps forward towards a homeland at which we have not yet arrived. We're heading towards the kingdom which is to come, towards heaven. And I hope thus that we can see that each step that we take, and that our neighbors take as well, these steps are indeed sufficient, and far more than sufficient, they are beautiful, not because of what we do, but because of the one in whose footsteps we follow, the one who causes the seeds to grow. Amen. I invite you to stand and join with me as we confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed.